What's up you guys, it's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. Today is December 29th of 2019, which means it's my three month diabetes anniversary. Yay, woohoo. Yeah, uh, I've had diabetes now for exactly three months and I want to film a little update video um, to update you guys, I guess, on how I've improved, I guess, with managing my diabetes. And also to kind of track this for myself because I want to be able to look back in the future and kind of see where I've improved and how I've grown and changed and all that. So. Let's get into it. So we're gonna start off with some numbers um, and that is gonna be my A1C levels because I feel like that's like a big number that you know your nurses and your endocrinologist people always like say to you. So when I was first in the hospital my A1C was 15.1 which is really 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 high and now it's 7.9 so I went down like seven millimoles per liter which is really really good and although 7.9 is like technically still high because you're supposed to be between like four to seven about um, I'm still really proud of myself because that's a big improvement and there are a few things that helped me bring my blood sugar levels down I mean obviously the first one is that I started getting treatment for diabetes because my first A1C test um, was for the three months when I was undiagnosed so I you know wasn't taking any insulin my A1C levels before were obviously really really high but I have been doing a lot of things to you know educate myself on how to treat my diabetes properly and the first one is reading diabetes books so the two that I've read that I found have helped quite a bit is one bright spots and landmines and number two think like a pancreas those two books are really good and if you have diabetes I would definitely recommend reading them especially think like a pancreas it goes into a lot of detail and it really helps you try and figure out how to adjust things to fit you and your diabetes because um, there's like so many factors that go into your blood sugar levels like you know like exercise and your insulin to carb ratio and what type of carbs you eat and the time of day that you eat and whether you've slept well and how stressed you are and there's just so much stuff and the book really breaks down a lot of it um, and I think he's actually coming out with an updated version soon so that would be really good to read. Actually, Bright Spots and Landmines is available for free online, so I'll try and link that in the, in the description below for you guys. Another thing that I've done that, to help me, you know, try and figure out how to manage diabetes more is following people on Instagram. I've followed so many people who are also type 1 diabetics on Instagram, and I never realized how big the type 1 diabetic community is on Instagram. It's nice to be in more of like a community I guess with people that also have type 1 because at least in my life I don't know anyone um, who has type 1 diabetes or at least I don't know anyone very well and it's nice to have people that are going through the same struggles that you are um, and you can like see that and see how they're dealing with it especially on a day-to-day -day basis like Instagram stories like a lot of people post on there and you can see like in real time like what they're struggling with and a lot of the time I'm struggling with the same things and it's really nice to have people that are going through the same thing as you that you can relate to so you don't feel like you're the only one in the world who has diabetes. And there's also a lot of people who have lots of helpful tips. I'll insert some people that I follow here that I really like and if you guys want you can also follow my Instagram account which is always in the description but I'll also put it right here. So since I've been you know reading more books, following people on Instagram, watching videos, and also just living with diabetes more. I've also kind of changed a lot of things since when I first got diagnosed. I made a video a while back of a day in my life with type 1 diabetes and honestly I feel like I've changed quite a bit of things since that video or at least I've learned more things so we'll go through this now. So the first one pertains to my insulin. I used to use Humalog for my bolus insulin but now I'm on Fiasp and so far I found that I like it quite a bit. It definitely works a lot faster than Humalog which is kind of the reason why it was made. I'm I think I definitely like it so far. Um, when I first started this, it was in the middle of finals, which definitely wasn't a good time to start a new insulin because my life was different, I guess. Like I was studying all the time, so I was sitting down for basically the entire day. Um, I wasn't exercising as much as I would normally, and I also was so stressed all the time, so my blood sugar levels were just all over the place. But now that I'm on winter break and I have more time to, you know, chill and relax and stuff, uh, I think Fiasp is working pretty well for me. I like it. It works really fast, which is nice, but when I first started using it, I was pre-bolusing for like a similar amount of time. And with Fiasp, at least for me, I have to pre-bolus way less because it works so fast. If I would do it like the same amount of time, then I start going low like two minutes after I start eating and that's not good. <laughs> and as for my long-lasting insulin, uh, I'm still on Lantus, but uh, when I was in the hospital at first I was giving myself 10 units a day because that's what the doctors told me to do and I would drop so much during the night like I would probably be about like 15 before I went to bed which is pretty high but I would drop from 15 to like 5 
and then I'd wake up in the morning and be, you know, around like five or six. So I would drop 10 millimoles per liter, which is fine when you're at 15 when you go to bed, but once I started, you know, getting used to diabetes and giving myself the right amount of insulin for me at supper, I would be lower, but I'd still drop a lot, so then I'd go low in the middle of the night. So now I'm only giving myself one unit of insulin, and I am still honeymooning, so I will probably have to increase that as time goes on. But even now, I'm still going low at night, and I don't really know why. Like, I was talking to my nurse about it, and she thinks it's because I'm giving myself too much insulin at supper, but I've started eating snacks before I go to bed, and also giving myself less insulin, but it's not really helping, so... That's something I still have to figure out. It's really frustrating to have to eat snacks before bed because I hate eating like right before I go to sleep so much, but I need to eat to bring my blood sugar up, but half the time it doesn't even help because I'll eat and then I'll just go right back down. Like usually I'll eat a granola bar that has 15 grams of carbs and during the day if I were to eat that much, like my blood sugar would go up like about like five millimoles per liter, but at night it'll literally go up one. So it's, I don't know why my blood sugar like never goes up at night, but it doesn't and I don't want to eat like a ton of food. Yeah, it's just annoying. So definitely have to still work on that. Another thing that I want to mention with insulin is that when I first was diagnosed, uh, I, almost every time I would inject myself, I'd either bleed or it would hurt so bad or a lot of insulin would leak. But now I think I've mastered the injection. I think I'm quite a bit better at it now. A little bit of insulin does leak most of the time but I think it might be because I use a four millimeter needle instead of like a longer one, um, but I'm kind of scared to use a longer one. And okay, I s actually no, it's not most of the time. Like I'd say two thirds of the time I don't leak and then one third of the time I do. Um, and it's usually not very much. So I don't know, I think I'll probably just stick to the needles that I'm using right now, but my injections mostly don't hurt anymore. So that is also an improvement because I used to hate giving myself insulin because it would hurt, but it turns out I was just holding my needles like literally like this and I like didn't really notice because I just didn't really know any better. So yeah, I fixed that now. <laughs> Another thing that I've changed uh, that I kind of mentioned before is that I started pre-bolusing because when I first got diagnosed, I was kind of scared to eat carbs um, because carbs are what make your blood sugar go up and I didn't really know what I was doing and I was already going so high even though I was, wasn't even eating that many carbs so I thought I just shouldn't eat any. The actual reason was that I wasn't pre-bolusing slash I wasn't giving myself enough so those two combined made me spike quite a bit. So I'll insert some graphs of what my blood sugar looked like uh, within the first month or so of being diagnosed. I was like never in range ever and I would spike and drop so much and it was really really tiring and it kind of sucked um, but now my blood sugar graphs they still like I still spike like decently often but my spikes are usually within range um, and I don't spike as high so that was great another thing that I've done to help control my blood sugar is going on walks I really do enjoy walking but I used to not go on walks as much because I thought it was kind of a waste of time like just walking around but now I kind of have to go on walks to kind of like to get my insulin like working because a lot of the time I find that if I don't go on a walk my blood sugar will start spiking really fast but as soon as I walk like even like two minutes it'll like calm down so I usually go on walks and I honestly really enjoy it because I get to listen to podcasts or listen to music and just kind of forget about life for a little bit and just kind of walk around and then come back and you know start doing my homework again and it's also nice because since I'm a student, most of the time I am sitting down, so it's nice to have a time where I can actually like walk around and not just sit at my desk and study 24-7. And now it's time to update you guys on, I guess, the mental health side of things. When I was first diagnosed, uh, I kind of just brushed under the rug, I guess. Um, I felt like I didn't have time to like actually sit down and really, you know, accept this new chronic illness. I guess I didn't really have time because I went to the hospital, I was in it for a few days, and then I came out, and then I had so much homework to catch up on, and then it was midterm season, so I had to study, and I'd missed a lot of schoolwork because before I was diagnosed, I was literally dying, and I had no energy to do anything, so I had so much to catch up on, and I just didn't have time to actually like process that I had diabetes, like I just had to figure out how to deal with it figure out how to catch up my schoolwork. And every once in a while, I'd like wake up and think that, you know, I didn't actually have diabetes anymore, or I would hope that I didn't have it anymore, um, but I would still have it. I still kind of struggle with it, I guess. And it doesn't feel real, I guess. Like, it feels like it's like a dream kind of sometimes. Like, I feel like this isn't really happening, but it is happening um, and there's nothing I can do about it. And that's another thing I want to talk about, uh, the fact that 
I have diabetes, like, and I will for the rest of my life unless I find a cure, hopefully. But it's really frustrating, but also, I guess, kind of comforting in a way that I can't do anything about it. It's frustrating because I can't do anything about it, and no matter how hard I try, I'll never be able to, you know, get rid of diabetes on my own. Like, I can't eat really healthy or exercise all the time or, you know, try some, like, weird, like, herbal medicines or whatever is online these days. I literally just have to learn how to live with it. But it is kind of comforting, I guess, that I can't do anything about it. And that it's okay that I have diabetes. Like, it's something that just happened to me and I have it. And that's just the way it is. Like, I don't have to, like, kill myself trying to get rid of it. I just have to let it be. I don't know, I, I feel like it's hard for me to express, like, what I'm feeling about this. But it has been three months now, and I think now I'm finally really starting to feel more normal about this. Like, it has been weird um, coming back to my hometown and, like, being back in my house and I feel like there's, like, a different version of me that lives here and that person doesn't have diabetes. <laughs> and especially being around my family who, like, I guess also isn't really used to me having it. There's not really a conclusion to that. I'm still working through it, I guess, and who knows how long it's gonna take for me to really accept it. But as I was saying before, um, it kind of, I guess, affected my schoolwork in a way. Before, when I didn't really have good control of my diabetes and I was just, like, my blood sugar was so high all the time, it was really hard for me to concentrate and do schoolwork and I just felt so tired. But I had to push myself through it and, yeah, it was definitely hard. Um, I was taking five classes and then I dropped one because I literally couldn't catch up with all of them because I essentially missed, like, almost a month of school because the first month of school for me was just like, yeah, I was dying so I couldn't do anything. So I had four classes and it was still quite a bit. Um, if you guys didn't know, I'm in engineering so I had like a lot of like really math heavy and like, you know, physics heavy homework to do and you know, courses to catch up on and it was really hard and uh, I did end up passing all my classes, which is good. Um, my marks were not very good, but I did pass and yeah, I don't know. It's it's really annoying because at the beginning of the semester I was super motivated to get really, really good marks and I was honestly really excited for a new semester, but you know, things happened and then yeah, I didn't finish the semester with the best marks, but I finished, I completed the semester and I guess I can be proud of myself for that considering everything that happened, so. Okay, I feel like I've been kind of negative this whole time, so let's talk about some positive things that have happened. I'm pretty much back to normal now, doing the activities I used to do, like climbing and um, weightlifting and swimming, and those have also really helped me control my blood sugar, which has been really good. And I feel so much stronger than I used to. I guess I never realized how weak I was, because in the summer I was still doing those things, but I was just really tired and I wasn't doing it like as best as I could, I guess. But now I'm like so much stronger and it's so good and so nice to feel back like I did like you know like a full year ago before like anything really happened yeah that's been really good and also having diabetes has really taught me how lucky I am to live in Canada and to have insurance that has good coverage because my parents insurance covers all of my diabetes stuff which is amazing and I'm honestly so so thankful for that because I mean, a lot of people I follow on Instagram don't have insurance that covers everything or they live in the US where everything's just so expensive and it honestly makes me so sad how expensive insulin is because people with diabetes literally need it or they're going to die and it, it sucks that it's so expensive in other places in the world. It's definitely taught me to be grateful for the things that I have and also just to be alive in a time where I have all this technology that can help me with diabetes, like my CGM or my continuous glucose monitor. Uh, I have a Freestyle Libre and they're really expensive. Um, each sensor is $90 and you have to change it every two weeks. And it's covered by insurance, which is great because honestly without a CGM, like I don't know how I would live. Like honestly, I don't know how I would even manage diabetes if I didn't have it. I mean, I'm probably a little too dependent on it maybe, but if it ever like broke down, I could like prick my finger and I, you know, survive. But to think that some people don't have access to information that lets them know where their sugar is going all the time, um, and even like in times like say like when you're exercising you don't want to just randomly prick your finger because that's just annoying like you can just you know swipe your sensor and you can figure out where you are like I'm just really thankful that I can do that. So yeah, um, that's my three month diabetes update. I guess in conclusion uh, I'm doing quite a bit better. Obviously my diabetes management isn't perfect and I still have a long way to go in figuring out things like you know like my insulin to carb ratio which I'm just starting to do um, and 
figuring out how you know all these different factors affect me personally. I've heard a lot of people say that diabetes is like a science experiment and you just have to keep doing trials on yourself every day and eventually you'll hopefully figure out what works for you but you literally just need to do this every single day. I have a long way to go but I will get there eventually. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little update um, and let me know if you guys have any tips down below or if you just want to comment anything. And yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.